Are you a vegan-loving straw coffin type of chap? Do you ride recycled bicycles? Is a cup of coffee an ethically sourced soya flat white? Is it? Do you enjoy hot yoga on a Saturday afternoon? Yes? Then you need to move to Brighton, cos it's where it's at. And this afternoon, the new Green Leader of Brighton Council will be appointed. We sent our very own eco-warrior, Adam, to explore. No. Brighton used to be famous for this, but now it's hit the headlines because after the local elections, the Greens are the largest party on the council, with 23 seats to the Tories' 18 and Labour's 13. And the Greens have got some big plans, such as... Meat-free Mondays in all council buildings. <laughs> Household food waste collection. Resist all the cuts. Yes, you heard right. The Green Group, here's two of them, are planning to march to Whitehall to resist the £81 million of cuts imposed by the community secretary. One of the early priorities for the new Green leader of the council will be to write to Eric Pickles to request a meeting so that we can sit down, hopefully, with Mr Pickles and uh, explain how damaging his government's actions are to local authorities and to public services. What makes you think Brighton and Hove will convince Eric Pickles where no other local authority has? Brighton and Hove is different. Brighton and Hove is clearly different in that it's chosen to elect a green authority. Uh, have they ever met Eric Pickles? But hopefulness is also on the menu at this pop-up restaurant, which has its own artist, because green supporters seem to have voted without knowing exactly what they're getting. What are their best policies for Brighton? I'm not really too sure, actually. I think... Uh, actually, I'm not because that's the thing, like, it seems that people voted for the Greens but not exactly sure what they're going to do for Brighton. Yeah, I think, I think it's because we feel that we've been let down quite a lot by the Labour and Conservative. And in the council chamber, those parties will have the power to hold up the Greens, who don't have enough seats to get through everything they might want. I think some of them are politically naive. Um, there are a few that are, that are sensible and I work very well with them, but they are largely untried and untested. We will oppose when we do not think that, that, that the issues are in the residents' interests. Um, we will support if we think that is sensible and is in business, residents, tourists' interests. Here, even the funerals are eco-friendly, and even the Greens themselves admit that some of their grander plans might get buried in the short term. And Caroline Lucas, uh, the leader of the Greens, is with us. Um, so you're only there because the voters didn't like the other guys. It's not a ringing endorsement, is it? Well, I don't believe it either because we've had 13 councillors there. We've been the same number of councillors as Labour for the last uh, period in office and people know what green councillors are about, by and large. That gentleman didn't, but most people do. And they like what they see. They like practical policies that are doing issues around recycling, around uh, getting better greener energy for the city, around trying to prioritise more affordable housing. Those are practical policies that people want to see more of. So practically, you really do think you're going to achieve zero zero waste in Brighton. They've done it in many other cities around the world. I'm not sure how long it's going to take us to do it, but it's a very good aim to have. Yeah, I mean, there are those who say you're making promises which are somewhat open-ended. You don't know when you might achieve it. You also don't know how you're going to pay for these things. How exactly do you propose to, to fight government cuts, for example, for the people of Brighton? Well, you heard Amy Kennedy, our deputy leader there, talking about setting up a meeting with, with Eric Pickles. Of course, that's not going to uh, make him change I'm, his mind overnight, but I'm it's glad, still I'm a glad voice. I'm glad you followed up with that. I'm glad you, you let me follow up with it. But, um, what we will be doing is looking at the budget that we've inherited. Obviously, we can't change the overall cap on that, but we have approached the Labour Party to see if they would work with us about looking within the budget to see if there are different changes we could make so that we can do our best to protect uh, the most vulnerable uh, of society in Brighton and Hove. Labour have said they are willing to look at that with us, so that's a very first practical step that we can take. Mm. Uh, I mean, you, you heard the kind of um, warmth within an already existing coalition, and you're talking about talking uh, to the Labour Party to get your your policies through. Uh, those who say you're politically naive um, as an entity, the Greens, uh, how do you respond to that? 
Well, there was a quote there, wasn't it, saying that we were uh, untried and untested. My response would be that the Tories and Labour have been tried, tested and found wanting. So I think it's not surprising that people want to see a different kind of politics. And let's not forget that although this might be new in Britain, it's certainly not new in Europe. We've had Greens running local councils, we've had Greens in Parliament, we've had Greens in government right across the EU. We're in close contact with those colleagues. Uh, we have a wealth of experience to draw on. We'll be drawing on experience in the city itself. There's real excitement. And although it makes good TV for you to sit here and kind of sound quizzical, in actual fact, there's a real excitement in the city about a new breath of fresh air coming in to try to do things are they, differently. Are they, are they excited about Meet Free Monday? I think a lot of people are excited about the fact that there's a practical, you may laugh, but there's a practical uh, opportunity in the council buildings to move towards eating less meat. That's actually a serious point. It's serious in terms of our carbon emissions, it's serious in okay. terms of our health, it's serious in terms of animal welfare. Are you excited about Meat Free Monday? No, I'm quite excited Thank about you. that, actually, because more and more I eat fish instead of meat, if you would like to know a detail from my private <laughs> life, which has not been super <laughs> injunctive. <I'm> <laughs> but can I just say something about Brighton? Because yeah. when I die, Brighton will be found carved on my heart. Because all through my teenage years, when I was at boarding school, I would escape to Brighton uh, for go and see a movie or have an illegal pint of beer in a pub or something <laughs> like that. And it was a great sort of pleasure dome. And I've seen it decline over the years. This was, I'm talking about the mm. 60s now, early 60s, late 50s. And it's declined over that period. So if you can do something truly to revive Brighton and restore its but former me, glory, I would love it. I, I would even vote for you if you but were But let, let me say that. as well yeah. that I think your view from the 60s, with, with respect, is out of date. Already, Brighton has a thriving culture. Right now, we have Brighton Festival going on. It attracts hundreds of but thousands of people.